and welcome to another episode of FUBA. In today's video, we are going to look at another event-driven architecture pattern, and this time it's event streaming. This is part of a series where I talk about what event-driven applications are, and we look at some of the patterns. The whole playlist contains all the videos and more coming, so if you have some questions or topics we'd like to cover, let me know in the comments of this video. In today's video, we are looking at event streaming, what it is, how to implement it with AWS and with serverless applications. So let's get started. So we have already talked about queues. We have already talked about PubSav. And now we are going to talk about another of the patterns that are more popular in event-driven applications that are event streaming. So basically here we can stream either events or data and you might have seen both. Basically, this is another way to abstract the idea from producers to consumers and decouple them. This is more compared with queues in the sense that um, when the messages are sent from the producer, the subscribers or receivers are pulling from the message. So you remember the queues that we have um, basically the queue in the middle, and when the receiver is ready, it will take more messages. But it's similar than PubSub in the sense that we have one too many. So we can send uh, messages from one sender to many subscribers, but the subscribers are going to take the messages when they're ready. So let's look at an example of an application we can build with this. Imagine that you are like a rideshare application like Uber or Lyft or some of those. And basically you're streaming uh, the information when the customer or the car is uh, going around and you're sending that as events to the application. So you can send uh, that location as an event to whatever is your event stream broker. And then that can then be drawn in real time in another application that is showing them up with the location of the real time of the car. You have seen that, I'm pretty sure, in all your ride shares, where you can see in the map where the car is. Well, they might be implementing something like this. The car is sending the location to the event stream, and one of the uses is this map app, all in real time. And now I mentioned that we have data and event streams, and are those the same? Well, the idea is the same, but they are different concepts. When we talk about data streams, basically you are just sending a piece of data. When we talk about event streams, we are sending something that is, uh, you can use them independently. So basically data stream, it can be like a buffer of a video. You're sending um, pieces of, for example, when I record my podcast, I use a tool that allows me to record locally and my uh, recording is going in the background as a buffer, and that's a data stream. It's just going, uh, and each piece of this, um, of this stream doesn't mean anything unless you have the whole bit of it. When we talk about event streams, we talk about events in the case of the car, for example, of the ride share that is sending the location, and you can do something with it. So each piece is kind of independent from the rest. If we want to implement this in AWS, you can use two different services. We have Kinesis Data Stream or uh, Amazon Managed Streaming for Apache Kafka, MSK. Both of these can be used more or less for the same use cases. Kafka is an open source tool and I have some blog posts about it uh, where we launched the serverless uh, version. I have not yet done a video of it. If you want me to do a video on how to integrate uh, Manage Kafka or Manage uh, <laughs> or this um, AWS service with Lambda and the serverless infrastructure, let me know and I will make it. But for this video, I want to focus on Kinesis um, data streams. I will call it Kinesis from now on because it's such a long name. But basically, this is an AWS service that allows you to ingest millions of events into your applications, and then you can process them in real time. So basically, we can use Kinesis for data analytics, we can use Kinesis for IoT uh, events, we can use Kinesis for, um, I don't know, whatever you need to ingest a lot of events. That's a great tool for doing it. 
You can uh, send events to Kinesis from external sources, and that's something very powerful. Basically, it's you need a client application and you can just send analytics or whatever you want to Kinesis. You can send from other uh, microservices, your own applications. Again, you have a client that you can connect and you can send messages. You can send um, Kinesis uh, to Kinesis data stream from other AWS services. For example, from SQS, you have there or SNS, sorry, you have there a target that you can send messages to from EventBridge and others, you can send messages to Kinesis um, and for other types of applications. So basically, um, after you get the message for Kinesis, then you can send it to different targets to process them in real time, a Lambda function, a container, uh, services from Kinesis, like data analytics that you have managed services to do analytics, whatever you need, you can uh, send them there. But uh, I will use Lambda for my demos. Kinesis is super powerful because it allows you to do processing in uh, real time. And this is very useful, for example, for machine learning. So you can ingest uh, data into your application, process them in real time, and then send that information to a machine learning uh, algorithm and take decisions on the spot if your customer will be served X or Y in their application or something like that. This is very used in gaming, for example, when we are um, in gaming applications, they are analyzing what the uh, player is doing all the time, and then they can decide if they are going to send them an ad or what kind of uh, promos or depending on the, how the player is uh, behaving in that time. It's also very used for basically any mobile app nowadays that uh, has some intelligence behind it that is analyzing your uh, behavior as a customer is sending analytics and then there is algorithms in the other side that is deciding okay you're going to stay here we can serve you some more ads or we can or we need to show you a promo or you are about to churn and you might need some really cool offer here in order to stay for a little longer uh, when we talk about kinesis we talk about uh, some interesting things like kinesis allows you to retain the events for some time 24 hours or you can change and return policy uh, for as long as you need. As, a, as I said at the beginning, the um, consumers are pulling uh, from Kinesis, are getting the events when they need them. So the events are stored in Kinesis until uh, the retention policy expires. So that doesn't mean that when they're uh, consumed by the, the consumers, the events are expiring. So that's something important. Also, Kinesis Data Streams comes in two flavors. It has the traditional one where you need to provision the amount of shards, and that's kind of uh, what it called the capacity of your stream. Uh, you need enough shards to be able to ingest all that data. Or the demand version, where it's like more serverless approach, where uh, Kinesis will take care of provisioning the amount of shards depending on the influx traffic. If you want to know more details about how uh, Kinesis Data Streams works with this on-demand mode, I leave you a blog post where I describe more the inner works of it. But for this demo, I will just use Kinesis Data Stream on demand because it's way easier to set up and I I don't need to understand the capacity in order to get started. So that's something we will use for this demo. And also, again, this demo is going to be done with CDK. And for sending the events into my application, I'm going to use um, a kind of tool that is online. I will leave you the link uh, below that allows you to send events to Kinesis. So that's something you need to configure it's called the Kinesis Data Generator. Um, basically, there are instructions in, in there how to configure it will create a Cognito access to your Kinesis data stream. And then after you have done that, it will see all the streams that you have in your account and you can send messages. So I already have configured that for my account and for my stream, but you, if you want to test this demo, you need to check that out. And let's go to the code and see what I have done here. This is an application um, with very simple, it's a CDK application. It has one stack and it's uh, that Kinesis demo. And what it's doing, it's basically a stream that we have configured here. And then a Lambda function that gets triggered when there is something in the stream. There is not much because the events are sent directly to the stream. So in order to configure a Kinesis data stream on demand, the only thing you need to say is the name of the stream and the stream mode. And in this case, that's it. <laughs> so this is pretty nice. And then the function, basically, it's a normal Lambda function that uh, it has the event source mapping, what is triggering it, that is uh, this Kinesis stream. 
and you can decide as with queues how big the amount of uh, messages are going to pull and in this case i'm going to do it one by one but you can increase that to something bigger and that's not a problem and this is the the function so this consumer it's just printing the events on the screen, nothing else. So I already configured the Kinesis Data Stream uh, Generator to work with my account. So you can see here, uh, this is the tool. In here, in the Kinesis Data uh, Generator, you click the configure and you will be able to set up your, your Cognito user pool. And if you need help on how to do it, you can press that one. And here it explains everything that you need to do in order to get this one. So that's it for me uh, in there. And now uh, let's look at Ireland. That is EU, oh, EU West 1. And it should be here, my Kinesis data stream that I already deployed. And I can send 100 um, records per second. And I will not send anything in particular. But this will trigger my Lambda 100 times <laughs> per second. So I will open the monitoring tool uh, and we will use that to check this out. So let's get started and see what happens. So this will send a hundred uh, messages per second to my Lambda function. That should not be a problem and it's going to start sending. So we can go and check here in the Kinesis. Let's see if this is configured. Yes, here it is. And we can see that this is getting triggered. It will explode a little bit because it's just getting triggered so many times that <laughs> it's just very slow. So what we can do is to see the, um, the CloudWatch logs. Let's see here I have this. And this will take a little while to start showing something in the dashboard, but it will do. This is the dashboard of the Kinesis consumer function. And this will start showing how many times it's triggered and like the duration of the invocations and all those things. So I will be back when this is showing something. So now after one minute pass, we can see that something is starting to appear in here. Uh, you know, CloudWatch dashboard, sometimes it takes a while to, to refresh. Here now I have this automatic refresh every minute. So we might see some changes. Uh, and you can open this in the in the CloudWatch um, dashboard um, and, and configure how you want to see these, these uh, metrics. But you can see here that this was uh, 1,200 times in bulk. I think this is um, using the, the maximum or, or average, I don't remember. And we will, should see some changes coming in. Here we can see the duration. This is the maximum duration, 46 uh, milliseconds, and the average duration uh, is 4.6 microseconds and the minimum 8. So we can start seeing here also errors and the throttles and all that information. And here it's starting to update. So uh, because Kinesis Data Generator is just sending messages, we can stop it anytime. So I will stop this. And one thing we can do is we can uh, play with the, with the batch size. So if we now, uh, for example, do like get every hundred messages, we trigger a Lambda function. Now we'll see the Lambda function get triggered less times. So that's something uh, we can do. And then we will process a hundred messages at a time instead of one at a time. And for these cases it's particularly very useful because we don't want to uh, trigger the Lambda function maybe many times maybe, and we want to process the messages uh, in batches. So that's something you can do. You just deploy and then you can uh, rerun the example and see how it works. So let's do that. And I'm back uh, when this is running. So we are back and deploy the function with a batch size of 100. Then I started the Kinesis Data Generator again some time ago. And then I created a CloudWatch dashboard where we can see the invocations. And here we can start seeing that uh, this takes a while to update. So maybe we can change it to one minute. Um, and we can see that there was way less invocations than before. So here we can see that before when we were triggering every time, there was like 1,200. This is the, the sum in, in every minute. Then this. 5,000, 6,000, and then I drop it. 
And here we can see that we had 148, 218, and we should see also uh, something going on in this dashboard. That is the same uh, function, but it's just showing everything. And, and in that way, we can see that um, the, the function now is triggered in, in batches and, well, it's more manageable. But again, it depends on your use case. And if you are going to use Kinesi Data Stream, one uh, event per function, you need to be aware of the capacity that your account has because there is a limited amount of uh, um, concurrent invocations that you can have. You can uh, adjust that with your support. So have that in mind. And with that said, the code is available in GitHub. You can test it and try it out. And I see you in another episode of Uvar. Bye-bye.